Um, so many people ask, what's the correct way to do an SPU? Now, the difficulty with this is that the way we do our research is people come into the lab, one, two, three days maybe at the tops. Most everybody within the first day though, we'll, we'll spend some time with them after we go through some of the formalities like how to, you know, what the research study involves and the consenting process and we talk about the risk and benefits. We also will then start to teach them the SPUs and, and what, what's involved because they haven't seen this before, they haven't done it. So you, how do you know that uh, you want to be in this research study? And so what we'll do is we'll do that. And then we might bring them back on another occasion where we actually go through some of the other procedures. So we teach them about what is it like to, to, to have a face mask on where you have to measure oxygen consumption or we put other equipment on that can measure non-invasively uh, different parameters. And then some of our techniques are invasive, which means that you have to penetrate a vein to draw blood or you have to sometimes take a muscle biopsy and cut through the skin and so on. But the most important point that I'm trying to, to demonstrate for people today, because we get a lot of questions about these things, is am I doing SPU contractions or Soli's push-ups correctly? Well, I just described to you that we'll work with research subjects individually for hours uh, to explain what's going on. And there's a lot of questions that they ask that they can talk to a person who has some expertise. Unfortunately, in the, in the situation we're in right now, I'm unable to talk to millions of people all over the world in multiple languages, and uh, we're not we're not uh, able to address that need. Um, it's it's not something that's part of my day job. For example, I do this voluntarily only because we've been inundated with so much enthusiasm and excitement that we feel like we we have to respond to people in some way. So the purpose of what we're going to show you today is something that I think is very important. And I, want, I think that everybody can participate in this, meaning that unlike if I was to ask you to start a weightlifting program or some kind of aerobic training, endurance training, or, or any other types of, of programs, even if it's simple, it doesn't involve money, it usually says, well, I'll start on the weekend or I'll start next week uh, or, or, or down the road when I get more time. I, I think that everybody watching this video can today try something and within 10 minutes, you will have experienced something that will not only teach you something about how your own body works, how it functions, but you'll be able to visualize better what we're talking about. And it's just a short primer. So the first point that I'm gonna make is that, that as I'm sitting here talking to you, it looks like I'm in a rocking chair because I have I've adjusted the, the chair such that the backrest is flexible and I am rocking. It's just like, it, it's very low stress. I'm not getting tired. I can't overdo it. It looks like it's, I'm very comfortable. Now, if I, if I tighten down the back of the chair where it normally would be, now I'm not moving at all, okay? This because it's no longer a rocking chair. But you'd probably say that whether I had it as a rocking chair or a non-rocking chair, it's not stressful. In fact, many people, and if I turn the camera out here, you could, you could look at the nice scenery and Daniel's gonna turn the camera and show you that you can look at the pretty Houston skyline and it's very relaxing for me to sit here and rock and look at that. It's not overdoing it for me to do that. Well, truth be known is that the entire time that I've been sitting here, I've actually been doing much more than pretending to be in a rocking chair or in a, in a straight back office chair. What I've been doing are SPU contractions. The soleus is actually contracting very intensely. And it's, it's important to remember that what you feel and what you see is not always what's happening inside the body. There's many illustrations that I could give for this. The one I'm gonna talk about today is fatigue. Now, fatigue is something that's notoriously difficult to study. It can be defined multiple ways, but when I talk about fatigue, it's not just am I lethargic or am I tired of something. I'm talking about true physiological muscle fatigue, meaning that I could take a, an isolated muscle out of an animal and, and stimulate it electrically. So it will work just like if it was working in the body. And there's no brain involved. There's no perception. It, it's just muscle. And that muscle will demonstrate very consistently a fatigue pattern based on the type of muscle and the type of contraction. Those two things are important. They're both important. The type of the muscle, different muscles have different characteristics. The soleus muscle has very different fatigue characteristics than other muscles but also the type of contraction, meaning that 
that there's ways to make the soleus contract where it will fatigue and there's ways to make it contract where it won't fatigue. There's a lot behind that. We're going to have follow-up on this in additional newsletters or something that we can put on the website for people to read and maybe even a video. But the point that I want you to get is that fatigue is a very real phenomenon. And I want everybody to, even if you've never been athletic, you haven't experienced it, you could experience it today and in a relatively safe, easy, quick way. Everybody can do this right now. And the other thing you're gonna get from this video is you're gonna be able to, to, maybe it's the first time ever, you're gonna get to try to do an SPU contraction and get a sense of how much fatigue or not fatigue there is. So first I'm gonna give you a take home point, a very practical take home point, even if you're not curious and amazed about how the body works and how nature operates in muscles, I think it's very cool. But some of you say, well, at this point, just give me a practical tip. And here it is. If you feel fatigue when trying to do SPUs or soleus pushups, then you're probably not doing it right. And we need to change how you're doing it, okay? And so that's an important point. Like I told you, we can't unfortunately work with millions of people all over the world, different cultures, different languages, because we're not set up to do that. It would be great if we were, uh, but we're gonna try to scale things the best we can. Okay, so here's the experiment. Is all of you are gonna be scientists today. It's not hard to do, don't be intimidated by this. First thing I want you to do is we're gonna test a muscle that's what we would say is a, is a more ordinary muscle than the soleus and it's called the tibialis anterior. The tibialis anterior is the muscle on the front of your shin. Okay, it's this nice big thick muscle right here. And this muscle is used for lifting the toes. It does the exact opposite function of the soleus, which is the job is to do what we call plantar flexion. When we say plantar, you're planting the front of the foot, the ball of the foot. The, the fancy phrase for that is the MTP joint. That's the joint where your toes insert into the ball of your foot. When you do a soleus push-up, and I don't know, Daniel, can they see? Maybe you could, you could kind of shine the, the camera down here so they can see a little bit down further. Is, is notice that when I do a soleus push-up, I'm actually pressing right here at the ball of the foot. Excuse my dirty shoes, folks. Uh, I, I was actually uh, uh, hunting recently and got a muddy. So right here at the ball of the foot, I'm bending my foot and I'm pressing down, okay? That's important. But as there's bending here, what's happening is the soleus muscle, which is in the back of my calf, is shortening. And it is, and uh, so I, I push down and up comes the leg. I push down here and up comes the leg. And so what's happening is the soleus is literally pulling up that heel. That is a very different activity than lifting the leg. If I'm lifting the leg, see, that's a pull-up, okay? That's not what we're doing. That's a very common mistake. And what I see is a lot of people doing this. They kind of come to the tip of their toe. That is not a good SPU. That will cause fatigue. I'm having to use other muscles in addition to the soleus. I'm trying to lift the foot. That's not it. It's not leg shaking. You see a lot of people, they kind of get in this kind of quivering motion or fluttering. Okay, that's not a soleus push-up. You don't wiggle your legs, okay? What we're trying to do is through, through a lot of experimentation, we learn the correct technique. And again, I'm sorry that I can't be with everybody to teach them, so we're trying to show you that movement. Now, let's, let's hold that for a second. We'll come back in other videos and other times to teach you more about the soleus push-up. But I want you to do two things. The first thing is, I want everybody just to get a sense of doing this. Do it right now. You literally can instantaneously experience this itself for yourself. So as we're doing this, notice that it's not causing fatigue. It's like I showed you earlier. It's like being in a rocking chair. This is very comfortable for me to do. I can change the right to some degree, and I can change the range of motion to some degree. Changing the range of motion is actually a much more effective way to grade the relative level of soleus contraction than it is to change the rate. When people get going too fast, for sure over 130 times a minute, now you actually are having a diminished ability of the soleus to have good metabolic effects on the body. When you get going real fast, you get this fluttering motion, which a lot of people have trouble even doing. I can't even do it myself very well. Um, 
Some people do that. That is actually a very efficient motion. That's not what we're talking about. All right? So we, let's say I did this, and I did it at a rate of um, 100 per minute. That would be 6,000 muscle contractions an hour. Each of these muscle contractions is very, very intense at the level of the soleus, meaning that I can measure the metabolism of what's happening there. It's very high level. Notice also, though, that nothing is happening in these muscles. They're all resting, okay? If nothing is happening in these muscles, it's the soleus that's working. Now, as I do this, I can do this, and let's say, I'm, I don't know what my exact rate is. Let's say it's about 100. I can hold this steady, okay? And I can do this indefinitely. I can do this all day long, and I do do it all day long, as in, and it won't cause any fatigue. So we say it's indefatigable. So this muscle working in this particular way is very fatigue resistant. All right, now, here's the other experiment I want you to do. Oh, by the way, I should have said it. When we do this, what are we doing? We're, we're actually lifting the weight of the leg. I can put my foot on a fancy scale and it will measure the load that's, that's working down here to push my leg down. And that's about uh, 25, both legs together, about 25% or a quarter of your whole body weight. So that's a good number to remember. Now, we're gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna put my foot forward a little bit and I'm gonna show you this. Notice how I lift my toes up. Now, I'm not using the soleus to do this. Instead, what's happening is I'm using this tibialis anterior muscle. And you can, I'm pulling it up, and I'm going all the way down, all the way up. Now, I'm not lifting the whole weight of the leg to do this, am I? I'm just lifting the toes. And I want everybody to do this. You start with your foot a little bit in front of you. You can kind of start here if you want to, but see, I don't have much of a range of motion. You start with a little bit out here. It doesn't really matter for this experiment, for this demonstration. So we're gonna put my foot about right here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift all the way up, stop, down. Okay, now that's the range of motion we're gonna work. And now, I, now I'm gonna to try to match the same rate that I was just going at. And I can go up and I can count it. And we'll do this experiment in a second with real numbers and real data where I have instrumentation on me. Notice how I'm going up, okay? So it's no big deal. Like you say, I'm tapping my toes. This is not an SPU. This is not working the soleus. And, and let me show you something about fatigue. Right now, I'm already feeling a burning sensation in this tibialis anterior muscle. We call it the TA muscle. It's already burning intensely. When we do research studies like this, many people stop within just a half a minute or a minute, and for sure, generally, with less than two to three minutes. People don't go longer than that. Right now, it's burning intensely. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've already slowed down the rate. Because like I said, if this was an isolated muscle outside of my body, there's no willpower involved, the muscle literally cannot continue to contract as intensely as when I started, it's fatiguing. Now I'm trying to keep going the same range of motion. I'm going up here to the top, down, but you see it's diminished a little bit, but notice the rate is diminished a lot. No matter how much you pay somebody, you could bet your friends when you do this, you can do a little experiment, they will fatigue. And right now, I'm getting a tight burning sensation. I'm, I'm looking at you relaxed, but I'm not. My blood pressure is high at this point. My heart rate is getting higher. The lactic acid level in this muscle is screaming high. It's as, it would be the same as if I was doing a running sprint. It's very intense. This is the level of fatigue that I'm feeling now that, for example, if you were weightlifting and you said, I'm gonna lift weights for a minute or two all out, and you get to the point, you just cannot push it anymore. It's not lack of willpower. It's true muscle fatigue. That's what's happening now. Remember, all that's happening is I'm lifting the weight of the toes. It's not that much work being done. Conversely, then I'm, I'm done. I'm toast at this point, right? So now we can come back and I can show you the real numbers and the experiments. I can do this behavior again. I can lift the entire weight of the leg, not just the weight of the toes, and I can repeat this indefinitely. Again, it's the right muscle doing the right job. That's why when people ask me, is it a stressful behavior? Maybe too much of anything is bad for you. The answer is no. Too much of, it, of this is not bad for you because there is not too much of it. It's it, you get to choose how much you do it. If you want to benefit a little bit, do it a little bit per day. You can do it five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes a day. It's up to you. But as long as you're doing this behavior, there's one thing that's guaranteed, and there's not many guarantees in, in, in uh, exercise type research, but there is one guarantee with this, is that every minute that you're doing this, this soleus muscle needs a fuel. 
and the fuel can be coming from glucose or it can be coming from fats and you can be guaranteed that it will be extracting an enormous rate of that fuel relative to the size of the muscle to sustain this activity. It will continue. It doesn't wane with time. You get those benefits. And there are other benefits that we talk about in upcoming studies that are related to other uh, biomarkers that are important for healthy aging and so on. Okay, thank you.